Hello guys, welcome to this new video. So this is going to be question 5 in the May 2023 time zone 2 paper 2. So here we are told that when tritium uh, decays by beta minus decay, one of the products is a stable isotope of helium. So first of all, we need to state what an isotope is. This is just a simple definition we need to learn. It comes up quite often in exams. And well, pretty much an isotope is is it is just an atom uh, with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons so uh, yeah, this is just the simple definition of an isotope for one mark. And then we need to identify for the helium isotope produced in the tritium decay, it's mass number. So, well, the helium isotope, well, first of all, let's see what the reaction actually is here. So we know that tritium 3,1H, so 3,1H decays into something plus a beta minus particle so this beta minus we know is just zero minus one like this and well if we well we have to see what is going to be the remaining product well we know it's going to be helium but we need to make sure that the mass numbers and the proton numbers match up because that has to be conserved so when we add up all the mass numbers on the left and on the right they must be the same so here we see that uh, we have zero for uh, the beta minus particle, so we just have a three here, and we need a two here, so when we do two minus one, we get one. And so this is how we do it. And then for one mark, we need to list the mass number and the proton number. Well, the mass number is just three, is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in an atom, as the number up here. And then the proton number is just the lower number this is just the number of protons and then the next question well this next question is part of the old syllabus we don't need to learn about quarks anymore and then in part d we need to compare the properties of the strong nuclear force and the electromagnetic force that allow the helium nucleus to be stable all right So first of all, the strong nuclear force in one column, and let's write the electromagnetic in another column, like this. Well, let's first think about the ranges. We know that the electromagnetic force has an infinite range, as the formula in the data booklet, it's something over r squared. So we can uh, very easily plug in infinity for r. It's not going to make a lot of sense, but it's definitely possible. And uh, well, for the strong nuclear force, this is only short range. So these are just the properties you kind of have to remember for these forces. As, as you can see, a question like this can come up and there isn't too much to think about here. It's just whether you know it or not. And another thing we can we need we should know about that is that the electromagnetic force is a uh, repulsive when we have protons repulsive between protons as after all we do need to just consider the helium nucleus to be stable and in the nucleus we have protons and neutrons so due to the electromagnetic force the protons will be repelling each other Whereas the strong nuclear force is actually the force responsible for keeping the nucleus together. is this attractive force between the protons and the neutrons. So this is actually an attractive force between neutrons and protons. We also call these two uh, nucleons. So whenever, if you ever see nucleons, those are just neutrons and protons within a nucleus and well let's consider the strength and um, so we'll, 
Well, the strong nuclear force is the the uh, strongest force out of the four fundamental forces at short range. And here again, we just need to consider short ranges as we are just talking about the helium nucleus, where which, which is very small. So we only need to consider these sh short ranges. And well, electromagnetic force is uh, uh, weaker than the strong force. Obviously, strong force is the strongest one. So this is going to be a little bit weaker than short strong force. Again, at short range. Because at longer range, well, electromagnetic force is going to be stronger than the strong nuclear force. Short range. And then finally, we need to outline why a beta minus particle can travel further in air than an alpha particle if they have the same kinetic energy. Well, if we uh, recall, kinetic energy is just one half mv squared. And, well, we should know that the alpha particle is heavier than the beta minus particle. Alpha particle heavier than beta minus. And so from this it follows that since they have the same kinetic energy, if the, if the beta minus particle is uh, lighter, then it must have a higher speed for it to have the same amount of kinetic energy. Higher speed. And well, due to its higher speed, it can travel further, pretty much. Travels further. Yes. And well, another note, this might be enough for two marks, but we could also, also mention just for revision that the Alpha particles have double the charge. Have double the charge. And so they are more ionized as they have double the charge. And so they are more likely to uh, come in contact with, the, with other nuclei and, go, and step into a re reaction with them. So more likely to interact with other nuclei and so yeah that will result in them traveling a shorter distance this is also like referred to as the the penetrating power and uh, well, beta minus particles have a much larger penetrating power because they are smaller, they are quicker, and they are less charged than alpha particles. And then if we would also consider gamma particles, well, those have an even higher penetrating power as they have, as they are the smallest one, they can travel the quickest, and so they will go the furthest. And that is also why gamma particles are by far the most dangerous as even if we put them in some strong metal box very thick layered metal box the gamma radiation can still escape so it's very important to store it in a safe place whereas like alpha radiation even if it's just left out in the air it's likely not going to cause much harm due to its uh, high charge the even the air particles will be able to stop it so it won't be so dangerous so yeah, this was question five. I hope I was able to help and uh, see you in the next one.